Good morning, it's James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and very well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. I'm deeply grateful to have the honor and the blessing of laying eyes on you today. And it's a beautiful morning. Look at those Colorado mountains, the beautiful sky, the prayer flags doing their doing their work. And yes, look at me wearing my, my happy color. And I'm doing that on purpose today. There are so many cool things that are happening in the world today in relationship to studying countries who are thriving under the influence of happiness. And I know happiness sometimes gets a, a knock for like, well, it, happiness is frivolous and it doesn't feel like there's a lot of depth to it. Well, you know what? The group that's studying happiness and basically kind of um, quantifying and grading the different countries around the world who are excelling in happiness there's a lot of depth to what they're doing. And I'm gonna share with you, um, for the fifth year in a row, Finland has been named the happiest country in the world. Five years in a row. But I wanna bring this down to something I think that we can all look at and say, wow, these are practices that we can embody. These are things that we can do based on what we know works and what Finland is doing to thrive these days. So, interesting enough, um, one of the groups that studies this happiness phenomenon in Finland has come up with three things that we can do um, nowhere, no matter where we live. This the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, we have community members from all over the world. And these are things that we can do in our homes, out in the community, um, and just not being afraid to be a beneficial presence on the planet. So number one, there's an innate knowing about practicing non-comparison and directing it towards the idea that energy should go toward shared humanity not comparing yourself to others, which is like the idea that um, comparison is a thief of joy, but really connecting around the idea of vulnerability and community by understanding that we all are sharing in our humanity. Many of us, if not all of us, have similar struggles. Many of us are going through things every single day. And the more that we are in that space of grace and recognizing that in each other, we thrive, we are happier. Number two, Finns have a great, powerful love of nature. In fact, their studies show that 87% of Finns are out in nature every single day. It's practiced as a ritual. It's practiced as uh, a medicine. This is something they just say is an absolute non-negotiable and they do it with zeal every single day. Nearly 90% of the country dedicating themselves to get outdoors. Woo! <laughs> That's amazing, right? We know it lowers cortisol, decreases symptoms of stress, depression, anxiety. It helps to augment creativity and connection, uh, makes our heart healthier, our mind healthier. There you go. So that's enough on that. And number three, Finns are all about creating and circulating trust. That is a giant part of their country. Now, <laughs> we, could, we could go in a lot of ways uh, right here presently in the U.S. Uh, man, we are, we are struggling when it comes to trust. Our leadership, our former leadership, our... Oh boy, goodness, right? So let's just talk about the fact that they did a study where uh, they picked 16 cities around the world and they had 192 wallets that had cash and credit cards and stuff in there, things that were valuable, and they dropped them on purpose to be lost in these 16 cities. Well, um, Helsinki, the capital of Finland, um, actually had 12 wallets that were dropped there. It was the only city out of all 16 cities that actually had all 12 wallets given back with all the contents still inside. No one kept a wallet. Now, you could say, well, that's, that's interesting and cool, but is it really trusting? Well, according to the deeper research going on in, um, in Finland, they're very much dedicated to a high oxytocin way of life. They're very encouraging to one another. They get out in nature, as I said. They are very much in a space where they actually encourage the connection to mind and body. They're doing things that are very much connected to the power of how it is they circulate good. And interesting enough, there tends to be a really strong relationship to uh, spiritual practices and getting outdoors and the way in which they use that as a way to go back into the world and be a beneficial presence. All of these things increase the levels of oxytocin, which in turn is a huge part of trust and trust building. So wherever this, these, th these three things land for you, uh, shared humanity, love of nature, and high trust, I think it's a really beautiful invitation for all of us to embody, to practice, to encourage, and distribute with beautiful abandon 
what it is that we've learned this morning and how we can take it into action and practice it out in the world today and tomorrow. And if it really, really feels good, which it will, let's keep on doing it the rest of our life with passion and purpose. Thank you. Much love, every blessing. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.